Hello and welcome back to Guillotine Chemistry. This is the second video in my new Nature of Science series. I've been thinking a lot about this content since I did the first set of series a couple years ago. So I'm refining some of my thoughts. Let me know what you think and then maybe I'll upgrade these to a fancier video at some point. And so this video is going to focus on the idea of facts. Facts can be really tricky. One of the weird things about science is that you can say something like this. That scientific knowledge is inherently tentative. But yet, there are certain ideas in science that are just impossible to deny. And, and so these are not mutually exclusive statements as much as they sound that way. The way science works is we test predictions and we see if the predictions match what we thought would happen. Um, but even if it does match our ideas, it doesn't mean our ideas were correct. Maybe something else was causing the results to work out that way. It wasn't what we thought it was, it was something different. Or maybe our experiment itself is, is flawed. We should be our own worst critics as scientists. So science is really not in the business of absolute truth. Uh, this quote, I think, does a good job of demonstrating what science is. Uh, he says, we slowly chip away at the unknown by demonstrating what it is not and raising up what is left for further criticism and refinement. So given the fact that science is tentative, for instance, you see on the news that climate change is a fact, how can a scientist say something like that or evolution is a fact? Well, it's because sometimes you have such overwhelming agreement between such vastly different sources of information that it would be really sort of intellectually indefensible to deny the outcomes. And so an example I like to use is to testing to see if something is a tree. You could check to see does it have bark and you could say, oh, it has bark. Now that's not necessarily enough to know that something is a tree, but then if you check for a root system, if you cut the tree up and see what's inside of it, if you check for the movement of water through it, eventually you're gonna do enough things that it sort of becomes intellectually indefensible to keep questioning whether or not that's a tree. In the everyday use of fact, it is really something that's true, something that's real, something that exists. But again, we don't really talk about truth in science. So we refine that definition a little bit to say something that's objective, testable and repeatable. And these are empirical observations or observations of the natural world. And so really what we're saying is that anyone who repeats this is going to get the exact same agreed upon outcome. And that's what a scientific fact is. And so, for instance, if you let go of a rock, it's going to head downward. Okay, that's a fact. Anybody who does that is going to see that result. Or again, as you found out, <laughs> since you're here, you, know, I, you can find my videos on YouTube. That's a scientific fact. Remember though, still scientific facts are tentative. Uh, remember that you know, things that we see as a fact right now could be disproven in the future because of evidence we haven't found yet. There are many, many examples uh, where this happens, where you know, we have an idea and it seems like the right idea, and then some new evidence comes along and overturns something that we consider to be a fact. And so a good example of this is Pluto's planetary status. Growing up when I was a kid, I mean, I, I knew that Pluto was a planet. That was a fact. But things have changed. Well, why? why? Why is Pluto no longer a planet? Well, because in the 90s, technology increased and, and astronomers started finding a lot of objects beyond Neptune. Um, there were thousands of these objects. And so the question was, well, whether to call these things planets or do we, do we refine how we view planets? And so they decided to do the latter. So back in 2006, they, they redefined what a planet was based on this new information. Pluto no longer met the qualifications. It had not cleared the neighborhood, as they said. And so it got demoted to dwarf planet status. And as I understand it, there are four other dwarf planets now besides Pluto. And here's what makes facts trickier is that even within science, they have a second meaning. So look at the bold part of the statement. Scientists can also use fact to mean something that has been tested or observed so many times that there's no longer compelling reason to keep testing it or looking for examples. This is where the term settled science comes from, as I understand it. And, and again, this is a slippery slope. Science is tentative, but at some point you're wasting your time studying the same thing again and again. And so from a climate scientist point of view, we're wasting our energy to continue to study whether or not the temperature of the Earth is increasing. Now, that doesn't mean we understand everything about the Earth or the system or even why the temperatures are increasing, but there are certain things that have been settled. So in conclusion, the word fact means different things to different people. And, and the problem is that even within science, the term fact is used to mean different things. One of the things people might recommend is try, try using a different word that actually aligns better with what you intended to say in the first place. So are you talking about a theory of yours? Are you talking about a direct observation? Or are you talking about fact in regards to what you strongly believe to be true? So that's the second video in the series. In the next video, we're gonna talk about multiple lines of evidence. Thanks for watching and have a great day.